In the name of Jesus, good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the house of the Lord, and we pray his blessing upon us as we gather around his word and his meal. I wanted to I notice on the calendar they have that I'm at a Take Heart retreat. The Board for Mission Services has provided this free of charge uh, for pastors in our area to uh, find some encouragement this week at this retreat. And so I said, that sounds like a plan. <laughs> so I go to that and uh, uh, try to draw some strength and encouragement like the scriptures invite us to do there. I think there was an announcement about food and fellowship. It's there. I wanted to invite everyone to food and fellowship on Tuesday. I'm so sorry you're going to miss out on this. Pastor likes like music, yeah. and he, I know he plays the guitar. Well, Mark and Tammy, well, Mark's brother and Tammy's brother-in-law is going to present a diddly bow. I have to write it down because I didn't want to say bow diddly. <laughs> but anyway, it's a musical instrument that he creates. And he's going to tell us about it and hopefully play us some music. And he's always entertaining. He helps at Community Kitchen. And so I know he's going to have a great program for us. And we always have good food. It's uh, time for uh, potluck. And we all will know that that means good food. And so hope you can attend. Last time it was at 12, and we ran into a problem with the parking because the school gets out at noon. So we're hoping by setting it at 1230, that will help us to have a bit of parking so that we can attend. Hope you can make it. Thank you. Is there any other announcements? Any other announcements? We are in that period of the church year since St. Michael's and Angel is called about the church militant. Uh, and uh, we've Consider the Christian life as fighting the good fight. Uh -huh. <clears throat> In the hymn of the day, it mentions uh, our battle sword. And so that's what I put on our cover. Uh, and uh, we get to explore that today. Our opening hymn, <clears throat> With the Lord Begin Your Task. <clears throat>
If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Remember your congregation which you have purchased of old. Remember this, O Lord, how the enemy scoffs. Do not deliver the soul of your dove to the wild beast. Let not the downtrodden turn back in shame. Have regard for the covenant. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Remember your congregation, which you have purchased of old. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, almighty and everlasting God, you have commanded us to pray and have promised to hear us. Mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may direct and govern our hearts in all things, that we may persevere with steadfast faith in the confession of your name. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament speaking to us this morning for the 19th Sunday after Pentecost is in Genesis 32, starting at verse 22. The same night Jacob arose and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his 11 children and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream and everything else that he had, and Jacob was left alone. And a man wrestled with him until the breaking of the day. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he touched his hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, Let me go, for the day has broken. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. And he said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then he said, Your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with men and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, Please tell me your name. But he said, Why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, saying, for I have seen God face to face, and yet my life has been delivered. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. He will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is in me, bless his holy name. The epistle reading speaking to us is from Second Timothy uh, chapter 3, starting verse 14. As for you, continue in what you have learned and have firmly believed, knowing from whom you learned it, and how much and how from childhood you have been acquainted with the sacred writings, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be competent, equipped for every good work. I charge you in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. For the time is coming when people will not endure sound teaching, but having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander off into myths. As for you, always be sober-minded, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. This is the wor word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 18th chapter. Jesus 
told them a parable to the effect that they ought always to pray and not lose heart. He said, In a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor respected man. And there was a widow in that city who kept coming to him and saying, Give me justice against my adversary. For a while he refused, but afterwards he said to himself, Though I neither fear God nor respect man, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will give her justice so that she will not beat me down by her continual coming. And the Lord said, Hear what the unrighteous judge says, And will not God give justice to his elect to cry out to him day and night? Will he delay long over them? I tell you, he will give justice to them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Jesus told them the parable to the effect that they ought to always pray and not lose heart. This is our text. Christ.
Christ would have us not lose heart, but pray. Why? What does this mean? How are they connected? What is prayer? What is our battle sword that the hymn speaks of? text of the hymn speaks about God. You are my strength, my shield, my rock, my fortress, my life, my tower, my battle sword, almighty Lord, who can resist your power. The battle sword that we have is God. God says his spirit, the sword of the spirit is the word of God. There's a connection between the battle sword, the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God, and prayer. Prayer done in such a way that we do not lose heart. The epistle lesson talked about the battle sword, about Scripture, about its uses and its purposes. St. Paul is writing to Timothy, a pastor that he has set up, and he encourages him to be about the Word, about the Scripture, breathed out by God, which is profitable for teaching, reproof, correction, training in righteousness. He warns that there are those out there who follow their own passions and drift from the truth, that wander into untruths, to myths, to lies. We're reminded of the adversary, Satan, the accuser, who was cast out of heaven when the archangel took battle against him with the word of the testimony and the blood of the lamb and sent that liar out. And we look at the Old Testament reading and we consider the name Israel. Ish is the Hebrew word for man. El is short for God. Israel means the guy that fights with man and God. He fights with everybody. What a name. Israel. But what kind of fight is this? What is this wrestling match that he was about all night? If you remember the story of Jacob, he fled from his brother because he was afraid his brother was going to kill him. And here it is 14 years later, and he's coming back, and he's getting closer, and he sent his family across the river, but it's a little bit hard for him to take those final steps. Is his brother still going to be out there wanting to kill him and destroy all that he has and is? Spends the night with his battle sword wrestling. And isn't it a very interesting conclusion to this wrestling match? He says, I'm not going to let go until you bless me. that ever happened to you? Where you've wrestled all night long with the word of God and you said, I'm not going to let go until you bless me? It's 
Sounds like that's what Jesus was encouraging us to do. To pray. Not lose heart. And what is he getting at? At the end of that section, it has this phrase, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? It seems to me a real issue. There are those that lose heart, that lose faith, that do not pray, that do not exercise the word of God, that battle sword, get lost following the myths of this world, being deceived by their itching ears. What's to be done? So let me be explicit about this. This exhortation to prayer is not an exhortation to find a list of things that you want or make a to-do list for God. It's an invitation take up the battle sword, the word of God, and do these things that the word of God has said it was supposed to do. Find the prophet, the reproof, the correction, the training in righteousness, the teaching. Find it for your life. And then share it with those around you. Another way Some people have suggested that we look at the scriptures as part of our prayers is uh, the acronym ACTS. Adoration, confession, thanks, and supplication. I think this is similar to what we had just read about from Timothy, taking these texts, finding that course corrections that call to praise. We heard that last week when the the, uh, Samaritan leper who was cleansed wanted to praise God. He returned. He repented. He came back to Jesus and he didn't tell Jesus how great he was, but he said, God, you've done it all. That's repentance. That's praise. That's reproof. That's training our hearts to see who God is and what he's done. Let's do that with this gospel lesson. I'm going to use that Acts outline, adoration. What do we see in this text that helps us adore who God is? He is just. He gives justice. He does not want us to lose heart. He grants us encouragement. He would elect us. He gives us himself. And he's promised to return. All these things we can ponder about who God is and what our station is before him. And as we look at this text, then we can make confession. We can confess that praise and turn that into repentance. We can examine our lives for those times that we do not fear God or respect man. Times that perhaps we don't even realize we're not fearing God or respecting man. Those times when our faith seems to be burning low and we harden our hearts against God and his word and prayer. Lay those at the feet of Jesus. Repent. Come back to him. Then give thanks. Because he hears our prayer. 
He would gather those. He would take our sins and our trespasses and give us his mercy and grace. The justice that he meets out goes through the cross where he took the punishment for our sins. So now we are given the inheritance of his righteousness. We give thanks that he would care for justice, that he does not want us to lose heart, that he has given us his word, that he inspires us by the spirit, by the breath of life, and in the forgiveness of sins, we also serve others. Then we move to that supplication. What do we ask God to do? We would ask God to give us a heart for prayer, to give us a heart for justice, to increase our faith, to strengthen us in the use of his word. Give us that courage to know that the Son of Man is coming to stand steadfast in his promise. To look forward to that day that he will come again. The Word of God. It's living and active. It's not just something on a page. It's not just a story somebody made up. But it's God himself who takes on flesh among us. We need his word. Jesus himself, when he was doing battle with the devil and fasted for 40 days and was out in the wilderness, the devil comes along and says, why don't you satisfy your passion and turn these stones into bread? Do you remember what Jesus said? Man doesn't live by bread alone. What he really needs is the word of God. Jesus believed it. Do you? And even though there's times that we don't see the word of God as that essential in our lives, he himself comes among us and calls us, come. He elects us in the water to be his children, come. He tells us that he hears our prayer. He invites us to see what he has to say, to wrestle with it. the end of that wrestling match, Jacob came out with a limp, but he also came out with a stronger faith. I have seen God and my life is saved. He redirected his fears about seeing his brother to understanding that as he was going with God, he was safe. The 
the trials of this world seem to harass us, that is our goal. That is the goal of prayer. That is how we take heart. <laughs> like Jacob, return to the Lord, lay our problems there at his feet, and then see that he is the one whose face would shine upon us with mercy and grace. He is our deliverer, the one who forgives our sins, the one who has beaten death, the one who would take us home forever. Him, all honor and praise forever and ever. Amen. We confess our faith together using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, came down from heaven, incarnate <clears throat> by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, the righteous who trust your word call to you day and night, and you answer them speedily. Grant us faith to rest securely in your mercy and justice as we wait the coming of the Son of Man, Lord, in your mercy. O Lord, Timothy was charged to preach the word in season and out. Grant us faithful pastors who will answer your call and be faithful voices, taking up the battle sword of your word to those who have not heard it, to those lost in error, to those who have fallen away, and to those who are weary. Bless all those in full-time service to your church and raise up many who will serve the generation to come. Lord, in your mercy, Heavenly Father, you have caused the sacred writings of your word to be proclaimed through all generations. Encourage and strengthen parents to teach your word to their children, that your people may be trained in righteousness and equipped for every good work. Lord, in your mercy, Judge of all, grant justice according to your word to those who suffer wrong. Give wisdom and understanding to the leaders of all nations, especially our own, that they may punish evil and reward good, fearing God and respecting man. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful Father, because you neither slumber nor sleep, deliver us from evil. Especially we beg you keep the lives of those who face sickness, injury, and troubles including Craig, Nikita, Ron, and Ruth Ann, Doris Brickman's niece. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, you behold our going in and our coming out, both now and forevermore. Grant us repentant hearts as we approach your altar this day, that confident in your protection and grace, we may receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for our good. May this pledge of our salvation preserve our life, keep us from all evil, and guard us in all our ways. Lord, in your mercy. 
Gracious Lord, you desire us to come to you in prayer and not to lose heart in the midst of sufferings. As we struggle with many afflictions in this veil of tears, keep us in your word and strengthen us by the suffering of your Son. Have mercy on us when our spirits fail and we are overwhelmed by despair. Renew our hope by the proclamation of the gospel to cry to you in hope day and night. You are our keeper. Guard us when death draws near and grant that we would be found faithful on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. I ran to the Lord for all his benefits to me. I will offer the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call on the name of the Lord. I will take the cup of salvation and will call on the of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord now in the presence of all his people in the courts of the Lord's house in the midst of the Jerusalem. <coughs> The Lord be with you. Lift 
Mittag av Johans. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Body of Christ. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. <clears throat> as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Amen. Come, Amen. Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. <clears throat> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Let us pray. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. We implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith towards you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.